Today we'll be talking about the instrumental detection or determination of NOx using chemiluminescence, if I know how to spell it right. So basically it all comes down to a basic question, what is chemiluminescent? Chemiluminescent is basically a reaction that produces light. So if you mix two chemicals for instance, you'll produce something that creates light. And if you go back to the, our lab from last year, you'll remember the luminol lab where we made things glow. So basically, what's happening with the molecules is that you have an electron on a high energy state. And what that electron wants to do is to get to its lower energy state so it can be more stable. And so when the electron drops to a lower energy state, it emits energy. Energy in the form of light. So then, how do we use this method to detect NOx? Well, first you have to remember, when nitric oxide, NO, mixes with ozone, O3, it produces nitrogen dioxide in a high energy level state and other O2 molecules. What's important here is the NO2 molecule because it's in a high energy state. And so basically, the high energy NO2 molecule will go to a lower energy NO2 molecule and emit light at the same time. This wavelength is usually emitted of 600 to 2800 nanometers, which is light in the red or infrared range of the light spectrum. In order to determine the concentration of NOx, it has to be conducted in a small steel reaction vessel. And so what that vessel does is that it has a small ozone generator attached to it and it'll feed ozone into the vessel. At the top, it allows atmospheric air to flow in, this including NO, CO2, SO2, and even stuff like NH3. However, in order to measure the concentration of NOx accurately, we have to keep condi conditions under control. Basically, meaning we have to keep temperature low in order to prevent other atmospheric gases from interfering with the reaction. And we have to keep the pressure low, so we have a vacuum air pump on the side to do that function. With both a uh, low temperature and low pressure, our conditions are all set and ready to go. What happens next is basically the O3 flows in and the atmospheric air flows in. And in the reaction chamber, the NO reacts with the O3 in order to create NO2 in an excited state, which will also produce light later. Attached to the reaction chamber is something called a PMT, or a photomultiplier tube. The PMT basically detects the light created by the reaction and it feeds itself into the computer system, which will create a graph that will show you the concentration of the NOx based on a relationship or an equation previously inputted. This method can also be used to detect NO2 concentrations. However, the NO2 has to be turned into NO first before it can react with the ozone to create an NO2 in an excited state, and so on. We can also note that some instruments have a gold-plated surface inside. Well, in this case, it's blue because I don't have a yellow marker. What the surface does is that it prevents surface reactions and increases the light collection abilities of the chamber. This just shows that chemiluminescent can be used as a method to show how much NOx you have. And always remember, know your NOx concentration. NOx concentration. That's all we have for today. Thanks for watching.